Welcome to our live stream. I'm here with art prof teaching artist Kat Huang and Lauren Welch. Today, we are talking about how to find the right art school, what actions you can take to get research that will reflect what the art school is like. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques and tutorials. This is a very tricky thing, how to research art schools, because as much as there are a lot of sites now to find information, it's not always clear what you can trust. For example, I would say for a lot of people, their first impulse is to go to the school website and do a campus visit if you can. Now you should still do those two things. Those are absolutely important. But Lauren, why are they maybe not necessarily a very accurate picture of what the school is really like? It's just advertising, it's marketing. I've been on how many campus visits and they're all pretty much the same. The only reason I'd say to go do it is because you get a real sense of what the facilities are like, which are very important if you're an artist. You're going to be working there. You want to see the studios. You want to see where you'll be living. But the number of times that I've heard things like, oh, we have a great we have great food here, or we are very diverse, or we have extra, or like awesome extracurriculars. It's like, the, it means nothing. And it's almost never true. If they say the, the food's good, it's usually terrible. Well, and what about campus visits? Because you should definitely do it. But Kat, wouldn't you say there's a broad range of tour guides out there? broad range of tour guides. Well, usually schools will hire their own students to be tour guides of facilities and areas, but these students aren't really that well-versed in the entire campus. Usually they're well-versed in their particular area. I know one of my friends was an illustration major touring, um, giving tours for prospective students at RISD. And I just know he knew a lot about illustration, but not so much about the other departments. And basically it's all up to chance what kind of tour guide you get. And it's not going to be very indicative of the environment the school will be if you get accepted. Yeah, and I would say also that once you've looked at about three school websites, they all look the same. And it's really hard to distinguish exactly what's gonna make them different from all of these websites. And so one concept that I would really push, those of you who are researching schools, is to think that the people are truly what makes a school. Because you can go to the campus visit and be wowed by their glass facility. And, oh, look at these beautiful studios and they have these nice professional printmaking studios. But ultimately, if you don't have a strong school community of faculty, staff, and students, who cares? how amazing your print shop is. And so actually I would push for the idea of researching the people more so than the facilities and the way the campus is organized. I mean, it's a bummer when the food's not good, but I don't know that that should determine where you end up going. So one option that a lot of people look at is these art school portfolio videos that we have plenty of here at Art Prof, but Lauren, do you think these are an accurate representation of the students that go to the school? Not really. I mean, they're kind of like the before photos in a <laughs> one of those before after things, which if you looked at the before photos for any other product, like an acne product or a diet pill product or something, you wouldn't buy that product based on that photo. So I don't know why you would do that for an <laughs> art portfolio. They are really useful as far as figuring out what kinds of things you need to have in a portfolio to apply, but not the kinds of things that you will have as a result of four years of very intensive art school experience. I mean, Kat, we have your accepted art school portfolio. You ended up going to RISD. Do you think this portfolio is representative of your time as an art school student? No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what I ended up studying and 
doing at RISD became very different from what my portfolio was. But I would, well, you can look at accepted art school portfolios to see how to get into that school, but it's not a good representation of what your life would be at, like, be like at the school. Instagram is very helpful in terms of finding out about our school programs. There's a couple strategies you guys can try. You can search by school hashtags. For example, if you want to look at School of the Museum of Fine Arts, you can use hashtag SMFA. Lauren, what are some other hashtags that you might think about? Um, I look at the actual geography tag too. Sometimes that helps me find artwork better than an actual hashtag. Only some schools have an organized hashtag and they're different for undergrad versus graduate. So you wanna maybe look at, I, I don't know what all the hashtags are. To be very honest, when I was a undergrad student, Instagram didn't really exist yet. So I didn't use that personally, but like for instance, Hunter where I'm at, we have an MFA hashtag that is Hunter MFA. And that has current work by the students that people post. I use that, other people in my program use that. And it is the best way to see the work without actually going to an open studios day. And Kat, why would searching by location make a difference? Well, because the art school you end up going to won't just be the school, it will also be the community around the school. So that's not just limited to students and faculty, but it's also the community of residents in that area. And you're, en you're going to end up interacting with the community, whether you like it or not, if you live in the area. So looking up by the location is also a really good way to sense what kind of life you will have in this art school. And Lisa H is saying the physical location of a school can make some difference. You may prefer an urban setting or a smaller town. What do you think about that, Lauren? Yes, that was one of my defining things about choosing an art school is, was I going to be really comfortable in that setting? I'm a super rural person. I wanted to grow out of that, but also wanted my some of my creature comforts like trees, for instance. I'm not gonna find trees in the middle of Chicago unless I go all the way to a park. So uh, that, that can be a make or break factor to some people. Also, as far as art goes, do you want to be in a position where you can easily see galleries or shows or what kinds of events are happening around the school? Because you have to remember that it's not just about your experience in school, you're also living a life outside of your classes. You are, but I will tell you guys, when I was in art school, I did not go out that much. <laughs> I mean, maybe if I had hung out in New York City, I would have made more of an effort, but I think it's specific in case by case because some people just really wanna focus on school. And so sometimes a rural area where there's no city to distract you, is appealing. Other people like having the city. So it it depends. But I think Lisa H, you're right. That is very important. And we have this question from Scott Guiley. I've been trying to send emails to the students who offer their email addresses on virtual tours. I think this is the best thing I can do besides knowing someone who goes or teaches there. What do you think, Kat? I think that's also a really good option because when I was applying to art school, I was also not active on Instagram. It really wasn't a platform that was huge yet. So I had no casual way to DM people. But what I did do was track down people on DeviantArt <laughs> back when DeviantArt was a thing. I did that too. <laughs> yeah. And also I found email addresses by of students who go to that school. And more often than not, they would actually reply and give some helpful feedback. And I think it just helps to just reach out. The worst that will happen is no reply happens, but the best that could happen is you get a lot of really insightful advice about the school you wanna to go to. I mean, I would say in general, most people who are current students, they know what you're going through as a prospective applicant. They know what it's like to not be able to get good information. And I think more often than not, they do wanna help you. And I know some people really are very intimidated about messaging somebody they don't know out of the blue asking for a favor. But Lauren, what do you say to that? 
I am always really flattered and happy when I get messages from people who are asking these kinds of things. It shows a certain level of trust, even if it's only a trust enough to reach out. It, I think it's great. And I feel like that is a pretty common experience. Even if it's not, what's the worst that's going to happen? The person's just not going to reply. And that's honestly fine, too. You should be reaching out to several different students anyways. I think it's really accepted nowadays. I just want to point out this really good comment by Blue Wolf Spirit that says you should first know what you want out of an experience and see if your target school fits your goals. This is another way. Um, if you're going to ask students about life at school, that is another way to get very specific about the culture at school and if it is in line with what you want out of the school. But also, it's kind of hard to know what you want to do for four years of your life at the age of 17. <laughs> so even if you don't have that clear idea, you can also ask the students like, hey, like I'm not sure what I want to do in my life, but do you think I can be able to figure it out figure it out in the environment this school provides? Like that's also a totally valid question. There's also a lot of assumptions that I think are easy to make. I know a lot of students in high school will say to me, I'm so worried because everybody around me already knows what they want their major to be in college. And I feel like I'm the only person that doesn't know. And what I say to them is, you know what, you shouldn't know because you're a junior in high school. How could you possibly know? And these other people who think they know are making all kinds of assumptions that are probably going to change their mind later. And so even just things like that, being reassured that it's okay to not know. Mm. Shout out to Tom G. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> okay, let's talk about YouTube and how you can search. A couple things you can do. You can just look up School of the Art Institute of Chicago. You will find all different kinds of videos. Most of them are posted by students. Once in a while, a school will have its own YouTube channel. I find a lot of them are not very active. And again, like the website, they very much are marketing videos that are never gonna really get to the heart of what's really specific. So Lauren, what would you say about these YouTube videos? Because a lot of what I see online is very black and white. And so how do you know <laughs> what to trust? Yeah, I'm not sure about these YouTube videos, honestly. I've watched a few myself. It's particularly interesting to me to watch videos that are from students that went to the same schools I went to just to compare experiences. And they usually have the best parts of the experience or the, the fun parts. They're very heavily curated and they are so curious that almost comes off as like kind of boring. It's just like, oh, I went up to the college street and we went out for dumplings and then I stayed up all night and I worked on my drawing assignment. I'm like, great, cool. That's really a unique experience for your life. But every single person that is going to art school is gonna have the exact same experience for the most part. Kat, have you watched any of these art school related videos on YouTube? Not really, because I don't expect much out of them. I already am kind of um, in the know about vlogs <laughs> and watching people do their day in the life. So I kind of know how useful these will be. And my answer is probably not very useful. <laughs> I think the one place where they might be useful is those dorm tours that a lot of students do, because I know for a lot of incoming students, they do want to know what is the living quarters like, and they don't usually get that specific in the school websites. But I do find that most of them are not commentary about the academic programs. They're usually much more about the social life and where's the best place to get bubble tea. And so it's fine if you're looking for that. But another thing to watch out for, <laughs> tell me you guys if you've seen these, the ones where people are really angry about art school and about their experience. Yeah, like Kat, why don't you go over this comment? Right, so Curfew says that a really negative or positive experience expressed on video can affect people's decisions to go to school. I do wanna point out that that's that person's experience. <laughs> and it's not going to be applicable to probably you or maybe even most people in the school. I also want to say that a current student in the school might not have like a good 
view on the school that's like reflective of their experiences because they could either be really like oh, I hate this school I hate being here or they could be like I love this school this is the best school on earth <laughs> those are really opposite ends of the spectrum that might not be what they think after they come out of the school and I feel like as a recent grad like I am a recent grad I'm able to view my experience at art school more holistically and if someone asks me about the school now I think I could provide some good answers versus if I were in the school right now that would very much change my viewpoint. I would just say in general you got to take everything with a grain of salt because you are going to find extremities and it's not usually that straightforward. There's so much black and white views on the internet and think about how much gray is out there. Like Lauren, you're in an MFA program right now. Is it really that black and white to you? I don't no, think so. It's, it's very complicated. There's so much politics and there's really politics with any school. And once you're in it, you're really in it. Speaking to what Kat said about it's, it's hard to really evaluate a school when you're in it right then and there. That being said, I do think following the kinds of events that happen with a school between the faculty and teachers, some of these Instagram accounts that record experiences that students have had, both positive and negative, are really useful. I, I know I had an experience like that when I was looking at applying a Cooper Union. One of the years that I wanted to apply, there was a huge strike where the teachers and the students didn't go into school, didn't have any classes, and it was deeply detrimental to both parties, and they started charging tuition. So I was really glad that I had kept my ear open and was following some of these events. For sure. And also another site that's good to keep track of are these portfolio sites which are very common amongst all these art schools. And they're all hosted on Behance, which is a professional networking site. I've never found Behance to be that helpful, but these portfolio sites that are organized by school, they're a huge directory because almost anyone affiliated with the school can be on it. Like I'm on the RISD portfolio site, students post their stuff, alumni post their stuff. Like Kat, have you seen these portfolio sites? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I actually do use Behance, Behance. And I do know that industry professionals also use Behance, Behance, oh, okay, because of the very easy search functions it has. Like you can search by school, you can search by location, which is not something you can always do. And that's actually extremely helpful. And just like search by different industries and different kinds of artists. These portfolio sites are very useful and very indicative, I guess, of also the work that comes out of each school. And I also find that a lot of current students post their stuff. So you can go in there and find somebody who's a second year at an art school and see, oh, this is some of the stuff that they did first and second semester. So I do find that it's pretty comprehensive in terms of what actually is happening at the school. Now that said though, it's a huge site. I mean, it's a lot to comb through. And Lauren, how do you... I suppose for lack of a better word, judge the quality of the work and how does that translate into what you think about the school? Yeah, it's so hard really. I guess when I'm looking at a school, I'm looking for a kind of thoughtfulness about the work that maybe is not exactly what I think or what I'm thinking about artwork because I don't, I, I wanna go to school, learn something new, right? But I want to also find something that's kind of in line with some of my interests. So as a painter, for instance, I mean, I'm a little bit older and more developed, but I'm looking for programs, oh, that maybe they have figurative artwork, maybe they have artwork that speaks in narrative. I want things that show thoughtfulness with installation and curation. So the, you, you want to kind of use your your filters to to help guide you through all of this artwork which is very overwhelming and honestly you're going to find artwork like good artwork at any any school there's always going to be someone who's really great it's just 
is this artwork relevant to the things that I'm interested in or the things that I want to be interested in? Right. I agree. Um, Tom G also asked a question about benefits of large and small art schools and I guess comparing the education between a more prestigious school and a less prestigious school. And I think Lauren kind of answers that question. It's really about the community and also the artwork that's being produced in this school and seeing if it aligns with your interests or I don't know, just like somehow gets your fancy. But again, that being said, it really depends. <laughs> It's not a black and white answer. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> we can't really tell you go to a large school because we can't. <laughs> but basically, you have to look up the people in the art. I, I would I mean, say... I'm... Oh, sorry. Oh, I, I would say that it isn't... I, I would like tell people to look beyond the ratings, really. Being mm -hmm. someone that obviously paid attention to ratings when I was younger and applied to school... I mean, I, I went to RISD and I accepted partly because of the ratings, come on. But realizing that that transferring schools actually was what made me realize that ratings have very little to do with the actual experience once you're in the art school. I had very similar, I'm going to call it a similar level of education and maturity in uh, both schools I went to, but they had vastly different ratings. So that that should tell you something. I'm talking about like maybe like a 200 difference in the USA Today, whatever thing. Yeah, and I would also just as general advice, where you go to school does not define who you are. It may mm -hmm. feel that way when you're in the middle of filling out all those applications, but I definitely know people who went to RISD and did nothing and totally bummed around and didn't work hard. And it's like, it doesn't matter how good the school is if you're not gonna put in the time. And then there's also people I know who went to smaller name schools who did exceptionally well. So the school's a piece of a very big picture of an artist. Yeah. Clara, I'm curious what you think about John Murph's comment about reputation being important if you want to teach afterwards. That's a really good question. I would say where you get your master's degree matters. I think where you do your undergrad is less important because actually a lot of people who go on to do an MFA, many of them do not have art school degrees. A lot of them have a BA from a liberal arts college or something like that, or in another field, and then they get their MFA somewhere. So I would say if you wanna teach at the college level, where you go to get your MFA really makes a difference because I'm sorry to say, it's a really elitist, snotty group of people that are gonna be judging you. And if you go to the two top schools, if you go to Yale and Columbia, I mean, it's like your golden ticket. So that's a whole other stream for another day. But yes, your master's degree matters more than the undergrad degree. Okay, the other people you should be researching in addition to students is faculty. Now, Kat, why do you think it's important to research faculty at a school? Because faculty also makes up a huge part of your experience. I mean, you're going to be taught by these people. You're going to be in these people's care. And basically, if they're making art that is aligned with your interests, maybe you do want to be talking to those people. Or if you hear that their reputation as a teacher, as a professor in the school is also very good, you would also want to be nurtured in that care. That also makes sense. And Lauren, did you look up any faculty before you started your MFA or BFA? Oh yeah, for, for both actually, definitely. I mean, going off of what Kat said, uh, MFA or not MFA, the faculty are what dictate what your experience at art school will be like. They kind of set the tone for the classroom and any of the critiques that you have there, the way people interact with you. They're very important because they're kind of like the top, the top of the hierarchy in the classroom, at least. So you want to, since you're paying for that, since you're spending so much time in that environment, you want to make sure that you feel safe, that you feel productive, that you feel like you can talk with your professor and getting to know some of the faculty or researching their interests beforehand or seeing what their interactions are like with previous students is extremely helpful to 
putting together a successful foundation for you to do well in art school because also the people are also launch your career or write you recommendations for your next school adventure or for your job like they matter for life basically right um this was a comment made a while back by blue wolf spirit but it's also talking about researching professors' backgrounds and also, I guess, their social media posts. I did find it funny that they mentioned LinkedIn because, <laughs> I mean, for a lot of industry professional things, LinkedIn is the go-to website. But for an art school and actually the arts in general, LinkedIn isn't actually such a huge go-to, especially since it's not a very good art portfolio site. But LinkedIn is a way to research your professors if you're into that. Well, I mean, I think what I would do is start with the school website, find the faculty listing in the departments you're interested in, find their names. Sometimes they list the website for the faculty, sometimes they don't. But I can tell you that any faculty you look up, you do an image search, you're going to find their stuff. And if you don't find their stuff, that might be a sign of I, something I you want to... Go ahead, Lauren. Oh, I can tell you what that sign means. Whenever I've had a faculty that doesn't have their own website or doesn't post their work online, it's not like I have anything against people that don't do this, but it generally it leads to a teacher that is a little bit out of touch with their students and doesn't want to uh, evolve as a teacher and that's a really difficult thing to have as a student who may be like a couple generations younger like there you want to be able to connect and you want to see that your teacher is continuing to keep up with the times and what's happening in the current art world with students and also you want to see that they're active and up to date with the industry i mean i know professors who had very thriving careers in the 80s as illustrators. It is a different world now. The way people are hired as illustrators, it's so not the same thing. And if you go to the faculty listing and they're not actively publishing right now, you may want to consider that to be a weakness in the department that they are not that up to date. And so really important to keep that in mind. And also another thing, is you have to consider that a department does change your experience. Like if you go to mass art and your friend is in illustration and you are in painting, it could almost be like going to two different schools. Kat, can you describe what that means? I absolutely agree. I felt like mm, when I was in the illustration department in my school, I felt like we were our own family, I guess. We were our own school. But the instant you stepped out of the illustration department, it was a completely different world out there. But I think that's also good and something that you should keep in mind because maybe you don't want to just stay in that one department. Maybe you also want to branch out and try different other experiences. I mean, I tried a jewelry and metalsmithing class and that ended up being really formative. I never knew that I really loved 3D work. And it was because my school had provided that, that I was able to have that experience. But if I had gone to like a school that was more streamlined into like, oh, you can only study commercial animation, for instance, I would have never had that experience. So that is also something to keep in mind when applying to a school. At the same time, that's also really helpful if you do know what you want to do and you are looking at some different schools that may not be at the top of the top. Just because a school isn't good at everything, like RISD tries to create this top of the line for every department kind of thing. But not all schools are like that. One school can be really incredible, like the number one school for dance and be kind of not great at other things. But as long as you're into that one thing, you can have a five-star experience. And I think that's a great way to get in a quality art education on a budget. Let's talk about recent grads because I think recent grads are in a really particular situation in that they've had time away from their experience and they can really see, okay, what did I learn in art school and did I actually benefit from that? 
And so what I would try to do, get in touch with some recent grads, like Kat, you're a pretty recent grad. And I feel that your point of view is probably different than when you were a senior, right? Oh, absolutely. It is very different from when I was a senior. And honestly, as I went through each year of school, like freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, every single year, it was a fluctuating <laughs> attitude to the school I went to. But now that I'm out of school, I can holistically look at all four years and consider if it was a good experience for me or not. And if it will be a good experience for someone who has a particular interest in something or other. And also to look at what are the recent grads doing? What right. types of jobs? Are they working at companies? Are they freelancing? There's all kinds of information that you can get from looking that up. We have a question here from Moses. What about the fear of being, quote, too old for getting your BFA and getting into art school? What do you think, Lauren? I have seen all ages go in for their BFA. In one of my classes, there was someone who was in her 50s or 60s. She was making amazing art. We had great conversations together. I think she got a lot out of it. I, I mean, it really depends on what you want to do and your goals of getting a BFA. If it's to learn a totally new skill and try out a new industry, that is perfectly fine. If you're trying to do this uh, timeline sensitive kind of thing. Some things is, for instance, if you want to become a teacher in higher ed, they tend to hire younger people after when you get your degree. So that might not be so great. So I, it really depends on your goals and what you want. Yeah, like John Murph here is saying, older students have so much to tell but keep your guard. You don't get beaten by amateurs. <laughs> I would not worry about that, honestly. I mean, you're there to learn. It's not a competition. And we do have this comment from Com Cuke, who says, I just had a 65-year-old retiree, 53-year-old with two kids, 70-year-old in my drawing course, working towards their BFA. You're never too old. Yep. It's not like being an athlete where you have to retire when you're 40 because your body can't handle it anymore. That's one thing that I've really liked a lot about Curfew is saying, do art schools care about AP portfolios and awards that were received from art competitions? What do you think, Kat? Well, maybe a little bit to enter the school, but it's not very indicative of what you will have at the school once you get there. But, you know, awards never hurt. <laughs> you might as well win them while you can if you want to. <laughs> and go ahead and just put that onto your resume. That also doesn't hurt. <laughs> I don't really know what award and CV stuff really actually mean. Like I've never been in a case where that has obviously helped me get into a school or get an opportunity, but at the same time, I don't know what it would be like if those things weren't there. So I have very ambivalent opinion about them. I honestly feel like it's not that important. I mean, fine if you have it, but I don't know that it would ever influence my opinion of a student as much as say the portfolio does. I would just say, oh, that's nice, but I think I'd probably move on. So I don't think it's important. I think it's more important that you hone your skills and work on your portfolio. So what about notable alumni? Because this is definitely something that schools love to talk about. Whoever's really famous. I mean, RISD is putting Seth MacFarlane on every catalog they possibly can because he makes $15 million a year and he started Family Guy. They also like to talk about the two guys that started Airbnb. So is this a good way to figure out, is this school a good fit? What do you think, Kat? It's not, it is not a good way to figure out if school is a good fit because they're really showing the very, very few top like 0.5% of like success cases. And they're really, it's a marketing ploy basically. The schools are going to take all these huge names and go like, hey, we made the guy that made Family Guy. <laughs> and I don't think everyone from that school will come out making a Family Guy. It's not going to be that way. Um, you really have to be talk. You have to talk with the community and also the real people who actually go to the school and have I don't know, just like more holistic and a larger percent of experiences that are more in line with each other. And you know something, guys. 
Um, I'll get to you in a minute, Lauren. Sure. Seth MacFarlane was a senior at RISD when I was a freshman. And I remember I went to the RISD film and animation show where they screen all of the student projects. And Seth MacFarlane had a senior film that was just like Family Guy. It looked exactly like it, same sense of humor. I mean, it was like a short of Family Guy basically. But you know what, within the context of the RISD film and animation show, it was such an anomaly. Like nobody else was making work that was that, I suppose, commercial and marketed towards TV. I mean, a lot of the other films were a lot more experimental, a little bit more artsy fartsy for lack of a better word. And so in that case, he's definitely not a good representation of what the film department usually does. You can get these, um in the when you're going on a tour you can get these alumni mag magazines like my school also sends me an alumni magazine every few months or something that just shows what different accomplishments alumni have had in the past months or so they could be show exhibitions or a new video put out or a big piece that goes into a airport or something. And I feel like these are a little bit more telling as to what the character of the school is and what people are actually doing outside of the school. It gives me a sense of uh, the school identity in a huge time frame from people that graduated in like the 70s or 80s to people that just graduated a couple of years ago. Hmm. Shout out to Moses. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but thank you for the super chat. Let's talk about online ratings because there are all kinds of sites where people rate different schools. And we've got our infamous US News World Report, which loves to rank everything, including art schools. Lauren, did you look at this ranking list when you were applying? Yes, I shouldn't have. Oh, they have what things are ranked, but you don't quite really know how they're ranking them. And a lot of it's based off of this exclusivity kind of thing. And they'll show how many people get in and how many people applied. And it's always something like 1% or 2% or 5%. And it's very stressful. And I don't recommend ever looking at them. I want to point out 10,000 Crows' comment about how the profs, like us, have different opinions and perspectives on things. If us three, who work very closely, who already have very similar ties, professional ties and educational ties, already have differing opinions about these topics, I don't think it's a good idea to look at rankings as a black and white and all be all. Um, example of the schools because it's really dependent on each person and looking at those rankings like of course people are going to look at those rankings like I went to RISD of course I was looking at the RISD <laughs> ranking but it's not going to be indicative of how you're going to grow as a person as an artist as a person in that environment also who's doing these ratings Right? I mean, you can't rely that they're getting people who are number one industry professionals, know anything about the schools in depth. And so I just don't trust them at all. I know it's so easy to look at those numbers because they do spell it out for you very concretely, but you really just can't do that because it's not that black and white. Now, my other favorite, favorite, <laughs> <laughs> online ranking site is this site called Rate My Professors. Yes, I am on it. Goes back many, many years. If you guys want to look me up on Rate My Professor. And this is a site that is not used just by prospective students, but by current students. Like, Lauren, come on. You looked at the site when you were a student, didn't you? So this site was very active when I was uh, a current student, current undergrad student. I don't know how active it is now. I think it is, but I used it. It used to have a little uh, rating for hotness and it would rate you like five peppers. And I would choose my, my teachers based off of how hot they were. <laughs> I'm not joking. Pat, did you ever look at this site? Oh yeah. 
Clara Lou, I've read every single <laughs> one for you because when I knew I was going to get into your class, I was like, I've heard a lot of stuff. I can't wait to see what's true, what's exaggerated, what I could, what I could, what I can see. <laughs> yeah, and this is really black and white. I mean, the comments, if you guys look me up, they're either very kind and complimentary or she's the devil. She will eat you up. You will die of artistic starvation. It's There's no gray area. And I can tell you from reading my own course evaluations, evaluations are not like that. There's a lot of gray. And you will get students who will gush and you'll get students who are very angry at you for one reason or another. But that's why I feel like this site should just be called like an entertainment site because that's really what it is. It's just there to like read the dirt on different professors, which I have to admit I have done on a couple yeah. of occasions. I mean, so it's just not reliable, guys. Don't yeah, look at it for that reason. The site is basically Dual. <laughs> Let's talk about dual degree programs, because I'm not so sure that a lot of people even know about these programs. So like Lauren, RISD has this RISD Brown dual degree program. And I know for you, that was something you thought about that relationship that RISD has with Brown. Yeah, I didn't get into the Brown dual degree program. I thought I was that kind of person that needed all different types of things besides art in my life. And in a way I do, just not at the level of the, the RISD Brown program because it's very, very intense. But I do really find myself attracted to schools that have these kinds of flexibility situations where they have alliances with other schools because sometimes there is a point when say I want to take a class that is totally outside of my art school to inform the artwork that I'm doing and if a school says that they have these relationships with other places you know that you have that fallback you can go and try out something new and it could be a great addition to your work I highly recommend them. Yeah, and I know RISD Brown, it's not just a dual degree program. If you're a RISD student, you can take one class or whatever at Brown and not be dual degree. Like Kat, didn't you take a couple of Brown courses? Yeah, well, I took uh, I took Brown French classes and I also participated in Brown extracurriculars. Like I joined their public speaking club. I don't know why. I guess it helped for the job I have now. <laughs> well, I actually was a classical musician for many years. I played the oboe. And so when I was a RISD student, I was in the Brown Orchestra. I did chamber music there. I used their music library all the time. And I even had a solo recital there my senior year. And so those are some affiliations that I think are really important to know about. For example, School of Museum of Fine Arts is actually paired with Tufts University. And so you can cross register in that way. And then there's other school affiliations, like for example, Lauren, I know Hunter has a bunch of relationships with different organizations, right? Yeah, so one thing that I really was looking for in my MFA studies, but also my BFA studies was where are students going right out of school or even during school? I know at uh, Hunter, for instance, they have a curatorial certificate program where you can work with other museums in the New York area, and that gets you a foot in the door as far as really understanding that landscape and potentially finding work outside like once you graduate. And then at RISD, there was a program where you could work with a scientist at Woods Hole. I worked with... Um, not at Woods Hole, but with a scientist, Roger Hamlin, who worked there. And I just, I really wished I had taken that internship opportunity because it was wild. You get to work with cuttlefish. Oh, Moses also has a really good comment where art schools have hybrid programs between professions. So we're talking about dual degrees, we're talking about internships, but there are just like so many options out there that you really need to research and see what there is because we can't have one umbrella term for all of these opportunities. They really just come in different sizes and forms, I guess. So really knowing what you want to try doing and seeing if the school provides these interesting hybrids, these programs, these internships are also good opportunities to look into. And finally, 
I think the best resource that exists out there for art school is Art Prof because <laughs> all of us went to art school and we all had such different experiences. And so we do talk from our own experiences in school, like the stream that Jordan, me and Kat did on what group critiques are like. I actually did this interview recently with Clarice Chua, who was a recent grad of CalArts Animation. And we do have plans to be doing more streams with students from other schools, streams like this, talking about what art school was like during the coronavirus. And by the way, guys, there is an Art Prof podcast now. We are available on Spotify and also on Apple Podcasts. And if you like us, please rate and review so everybody can know how fabulous we are. And please join us in the Discord. The link is in the video description below. We will be over in the Discord in about five minutes. We're gonna join you guys for the post stream party in the channel called Post Live Streams. Subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make everything possible. Thank you to everybody for joining the chat, giving us all of your thoughts. Everybody, we will see you next time. Bye.